Good evening. Oh, sorry. Um, we're just about ready to get started here, so I want to thank everybody for coming. Yep. It's um, so nice to see uh, a good turnout like this. It's nice to see students excited about coming to BCC and taking their future seriously. My name is Michael Hull. I'm the acting first year engagement specialist. And tonight we're going to give you a lot of information that will allow you to take the next steps in your academic career. In the folders you were given tonight, there, are agen there is an agenda so you can follow along as the night progresses. Uh, in that folder you also find my card as well because my job here is working with first year students so it's likely that you'll see my face uh, in your academic career. So without further ado, I'd like to get underway. So I'm going to introduce Dr. John J. Sprega, president of Bristol Community College. Well, thank you, Michael. And uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to BCC. Some of you may not have been here before. and I wish we had the sunshine for you that uh, you can see the beauty of our campus. But uh, it's a terrific place to be, and I'm going to tell you exactly why you made a great choice to come to BCC. <clears throat> and you have a number of people from the college uh, interspersed in our tables uh, uh, that are, are here to, uh, just for you. They're here to answer your questions. So the most important thing I want to tell you right now is please do not leave tonight until all your questions are answered, okay? You've got a wide range of experts. It's going to be hard to you know, get them all in one room again for you uh, at another time. So they're here, and they're here especially for the purpose of helping you, okay? So please take advantage of their expertise. And I'm going to give you just quickly uh, just a few reasons why you made such a terrific choice uh, about Bristol Community College. Uh, you don't know much about the college, maybe. There are 15 community colleges in the state. Uh, Bristol is the third largest of all of them. Uh, we have uh, so over 12,000 uh, students who come here, uh, larger than UMass undergraduate, Dartmouth, and larger than uh, Bridgewater State undergraduate. So we're the largest undergraduate uh, institution of higher education in southeastern Mass. Um, uh, we have accordingly uh, just drawn terrific people. And so the first reason that I'm going to tell you you made such a terrific choice is the faculty that we have. We have outstanding faculty. Uh, the important thing about faculty uh, at, the, at Bristol Community College is that they're not only experts in their field, which you would expect. Uh, faculty everywhere are supposed to know their business, right? Uh, but the important thing is uh, they know how to communicate that knowledge. That's not, a, that's not easy. That's not an easy thing. And some of us who have been at larger institutions will find that uh, I tell you what a treasure it is to have faculty who can communicate their expertise. Uh, it's one thing to have it, but it's an, it's, it doesn't do any good if you can't communicate it to people. So they share this expertise with you. Please take advantage of office hours after uh, class, before class, uh, online. Most of them will give you their email address, their phone numbers. Uh, that's another thing that this outstanding faculty, they will make themselves available to you not just for the 50-minute class or whatever it is. Okay, so please, please, please take advantage of this outstanding faculty. They're the best in the, uh, in the, in the state. I'm going to say the best in the universe. They're committed. I've seen them now for 13 years. Uh, and uh, when new, new people come in, new faculty come in, uh, they uh, take right in, don't miss a step with some of the faculty that have retired. And, uh, and the trend uh, just keeps going. And, uh, it's just wonderful. In fact, some of the people that have retired continue to teach for us on a part-time basis. So we have a terrific uh, array of instructors for you. Uh, the second great reason that you uh, chose, uh, reason why you chose uh, uh, Bissell Community College is the outstanding support staff uh, that we have. We have, uh, in addition to the faculty, all of those professional attributes that I uh, described for the faculty apply to our support staff. And you'll see them here tonight, uh, eager to help you, uh, not letting any question go unanswered. And if they don't know the immediate answer, they'll get back to you with the answer. Uh, and it's just wonderful to see uh, uh, the uh, support staff so, uh, so committed to student success. 
the faculty and everyone else uh, at the staff. Uh, we, I tell people, all employees, the only reason we have job is for you. The only reason we have jobs is for you to succeed. And student success is our most important priority at Bristol Community College. If you don't feel that way, this is probably not the place for you. Uh, so uh, it's very important that that become embedded into our mission statement, our vision statement, changing the world. What a vision statement that is, right? Uh, and moving forward. Uh, so uh, student success, uh, outstanding faculty, outstanding uh, support staff, outstanding support services. That's another very important ingredient. I always say the two most important things at the college for student success is or are uh, one, uh, uh, instruction, and two, instructional support. Uh, a lot of times people need to take advantage outside the classroom of the support services that we can provide. And that includes tutoring and uh, supplemental instruction, those office hours that I mentioned. Uh, please take advantage of them. I, I do want to dwell just a second on tutoring for you. Um, there, is, there are some myths about tutoring that I want to dispel before you even start. And that is that tutoring is only for uh, people not doing well or failing. And that's not true at all. We've had uh, people with uh, uh, A minuses go for tutoring, trying to get that A. Uh, people with B pluses and Bs. Uh, so it's not just for people. It is for them, too. If you're struggling, uh, then it's for you as well. Uh, but I don't want a stigma attached to tutoring. If you say, I'm going for tutoring, it's, uh, it should be something uh, you're very proud of because you, you made a decision to uh, move forward uh, in addition to the classes that you have to make sure you excel in those classes, okay? So the tutoring, the other thing about tutoring is that uh, people always wait, seem to always wait, uh, until it's uh, too late, okay? You can't go this time of year in December with final exams coming up next week uh, or so. Uh, you can't uh, wait and then say, well, I'm going to get tutored and try to clean up the previous 14 weeks of the semester uh, in a day and a half or so, uh, a couple hours at the tutoring center. Okay, so uh, uh, tutoring is, uh, starts early. The, the, uh, the uh, uh, image that, uh, imagery that I always use is that don't wait for the water to get over your head and then it's too late. As soon as your feet get wet, okay, go to the tutoring lab, uh, make an appointment and see them. We have them for all the courses uh, and supplemental instruction take advantage of these expert people. They're experts. Uh, we have peer tutors, uh, student tutors. We have faculty tutors. We have professional staff tutors. Uh, they're all for you, and they're all here at the college. Uh, so uh, great faculty, great support staff, great support services. One last thing, uh, and that is the uh, uh, extracurricular, co-curricular activities at the college. And that is what I refer to as a holistic education. What happens uh, in the BCC experience is what I call it. And what happens uh, when you uh, are outside of class, okay? Now, uh, you can hang around here in the cafeteria, a lot of people do, uh, but we like you to join clubs and get involved in student activities. We have clubs related to disciplines. We have a Portuguese club, a philosophy club, science club. So we have clubs uh, related to disciplines. We have clubs related to recreation, ski club, chess club. Uh, and, if you don't, and if we don't have a club uh, that you want to start, see Kathleen Burns there. She'll start. Raise your hand, Kathleen. There you go. She, Kathleen will, will, will start the club. If you have enough people, a couple people to start a club, we'll start it up for you because we think it's very important in this holistic experience at BCC that you, uh, that you move forward uh, with, uh, with these extracurricular activities. In addition, we have athletics. Uh, Derek here is our athletic director. We have men, women, and uh, men in uh, so, uh, men's soccer and basketball, is what I'm trying to say, and women's soccer and basketball. So if you're interested, uh, please do um, uh, and contact Derek or anyone else, and someone will be sure to tell you who to get hold of uh, if you're interested in that. We have student government. We have student elections. We have a, you're going to meet a student trustee uh, that is, sits on our board of trustees who runs the college, okay? So uh, uh, th these are all in, uh, things that will enhance your 
educational experience at BCC, and that's why you're here, to get an education, and that includes inside the classroom as well as outside. Okay, well, I've gone on longer than I usually do, but I, I did want to, uh, I get sometimes encouraged, uh, enthused when I talk about BCC, uh, and uh, I think it's time for closing, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm going to turn you over right now to, uh, you think uh, I'm a champion. You're going to hear some other champions uh, later tonight as well. And I'm going to turn you back to uh, Michael Hall, who is a former student trustee, former student at BCC, and now a millionaire working for BCC. <laughs> so Michael Hall, ladies and gentlemen, good luck. And don't leave without getting your uh, questions answered. Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much, President Spraga. You did actually steal a little bit of my bit. Um, what I want to do now is uh, touch on what the President did mention about all the services that are, meant, that are represented here tonight. And I'd like to go around the room and introduce these uh, wonderful people because they really are the backbone of student services here at BCC. And they make the college run um, from day to day. So from student engagement, Kathleen Burns. From athletics, Derek Viveris again. From Health Services, Carol Constantine, back there. From Advisement, Sarah Coker. From Testing, Jackie Moreland, back over there. From Veterans, Michael Flanagan. I saw Michael, there he is. And from Attleboro, Joe Yassian. So I want to thank you all for coming. It shows your dedication. and. Um, you know, to help these students get to the next step. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Steve Ozog, Vice President of Students and Enrollment Services. Thank you, Michael. As the President said, from, from former student to uh, part of the 1%, uh, millionaire here. Okay, maybe not quite. Good evening, everybody. Thank you to whoever said that. Thank you. Was that you, Joe? Was that you answering? You, uh, Michael just introduced some of the folks here before uh, who represent some of the services here. We'll hear a little bit more about some other services that aren't necessarily represented here tonight but are important to you, and we'll talk about those a little later. Welcome to next night. What is next night? Next night. Shouldn't it be tomorrow night? Why are we here tonight if it's next night? Next night is the night that we're going to talk to you about the next steps because we want you to know what you need to get ready for in order to be successful here at BCC. We've called it different things before. We've called it family nights because we do invite other members of the family to come in here. We find that that can be very important, by the way, having more than one person listening because somebody might pick up on one thing, but somebody else at the table picks up on something else. And at the end of the night, you're comparing notes and realizing, oh, you got it all, which might, it, and it might be hard for one person to digest. So it's nice having other members here with you, listening if you are the student. But let me ask, is there anybody here who could be honest and tell me that they know what the next steps are? Anybody? Not staff. <laughs> Any students here who know? Good. Because if there was someone, not you either back there. <laughs> You're a returning student, no. Because if someone did raise their hand, I was going to ask you why you were here then, if you already knew what you had to do. Or I was going to tell you to please take over and, and do the presentation here. All right, I've got to try to do multiple things. I only have two hands and I have three things to manipulate. Let's see if I can do this. Before we get into next steps, a little bit about where we are and who we are. These are all the locations that Bristol Community College is at in southeastern Massachusetts. We have saturated the area. That is our service delivery area, and we are in Fall River. We are in New Bedford, two campuses in New Bedford, the downtown campus, which comprises two buildings, one on Union Street and one on Purchase Street, and a, another uh, center at the Volk School where only uh, evening classes are held. We have a center in Attleboro, a full operation there, day, evenings, weekends. We have a Taunton satellite at the uh, Benjamin Freedom Middle School, Friedman Middle School, where we just offer right now late afternoon and evening classes, but we're looking to expand. And we consider e-learning a campus, a location. It's our virtual location, where you can take either totally online classes and not have to show up physically in class at all, or you can take a hybrid class 
which is a combination of some sessions that are held in a classroom setting and some that you take in the virtual environment. Again, forgive me as I'm flipping and flipping and doing multiple things at once here. I need Vanna White. Do we have a Vanna White? No? No volunteers either. <laughs> oh, we, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. But if we can get Vanna for next time, that would be good. The orientation process. This is an actual process. Orientation isn't just a one-shot deal. We have several steps as part of the orientation process, and there's a reason for each one. This is one of the first steps in the orientation process, learning what it is that you need to do in order to be prepared. The next step for most of you will be testing, advisement, and registration. Most of you, I assume, are in the pipeline now that you've been matriculated into the college, you've been accepted into the program. There might be a couple who are still waiting to hear. There might be a couple who are just brand new and haven't really done that yet. But for most of you, you should be in that pipeline. And so the next step after this will be testing, advisement, and registration. And we'll talk a little bit of, uh, more about that in a minute. And then there's two other pieces that happen a little differently in the spring and, and in the fall. For the upcoming spring, the, we kind of blend things together on orientation day where you'll get an academic orientation and an orientation uh, to, the, to the entire campus, kind of like all the last minute things that you need to know in order to really, really get started a couple days later with your classes. So you'll learn a lot between now and then, and then just a couple days before classes start, we'll bring you in for a final orientation day. And for the new spring students, we'll combine academic and full orientation into one. If you were deferring your enrollment until next fall, during the summer that orientation occurs and the academic, there's an actual academic week, or orientation week, and each different programs come in on different days of the week and get a full day orientation just to your academic program. But, but for those of you attending in the spring, it'll simply be combined in one day just before classes start. And those dates for the spring are at these, and these locations are there on the screen. So depending on where you going to be attending, oh, not on that screen, but how about this one? That one better? That third hand would come in really handy right now. <clears throat> so these are the three dates, Attleboro, New Bedford, and Fall River, depending on where you're going to attend. If you live in Taunton, unfortunately, we don't have an orientation day there, but it's very interesting. If you live in Taunton, depending on where you live in Greater Taunton, you might be closer to any one of these three locations. If you live on the south side of town or, or just south of Taunton, Fall River is probably your closest. If you live north, northwest of Taunton, Attleboro might be closest. And if you live on the east side of Taunton or beyond there, Freetown, something like that, New Bedford might be the closest for you. But you decide which one is best for you, and that's the location where you can attend orientation. We do encourage that no matter which of the other sites you attend, we do encourage all students, though, to come to the Fall River one simply because there are some activities, programming, and services that only happen here in Fall River. And if you want the full exposure to everything we do, you might want to come to Fall River also. There's objectives to orientation. How many people think we do this simply because we have money and we need to fill up the time? And we want to keep ourselves busy and you. Anybody? No? Good. Good. There are actual objectives to the orientation. These are the four that in that we have put together that we really hope you get out of this entire process. And the first is that we want you to be better prepared. Remember back to your first day of school ever, whether it be preschool or kindergarten or whatever, and all those things you needed to do to be prepared that your mom or your dad or some other member of the household helped you get ready. You had the shiny new clothes and the new backpack and maybe a new pencil box and had all the little things in it that you needed, the eraser and the pens and pencils and Okay, maybe you folks are too young to remember those days. Maybe I'm going back to my days. But whatever the case, those are all the things you needed to do to be prepared. Well, college is no different. We're not going to buy you a backpack or new clothes. You can do that yourself if you'd like. But there's all these things that you need to know and need to be prepared for in order to be successful. And we hope that you get that out of this process. We want you to do some resource mining because we have a lot of valuable information to share with you. An awful lot of information, which goes back to why it's good to have more than one person listening sometimes. We're, try, we're going to try to give you a lot of that information, information tonight, but there'll also be a lot of it as you go along into the other steps here. And, and by resource mining, what we mean is, you know, you can picture a miner going in there and digging and digging and trying to take out the best and the best and putting it in the bucket and adding it to the load. 
Well, that's what we want you to do with this information. Gather it all in. Take it all in. It may not all make sense at first. It may not all make sense tonight. But it will eventually. And it will become all, all of it will become important at some point. Making connections. That's why Michael went through the, through the effort of introducing these folks to you. And you'll have the opportunity to meet them at the various tables tonight. And, and many others during the orientation process here. We want you to make connections. Because we know it has a direct impact on retention and graduation. Study after study shows this over and over again. Students who make connections early, early on, have a much higher success rate overall. We don't have to get into tonight what the reasons are behind that, but we know it's true. If you make connections, you automatically, simply by making the connection, you increase your chances of being successful. So wouldn't you want to do that? It doesn't take much of an investment just to make that connection. And in making those connections, we're partners in this. We want you to think of this as a partnership. We are entering into a partnership with you to help you succeed. And touching on something the president said about why we come to work every day. I don't know how many actual students we have in the audience here right now, but every one of you have your, has your own goal in mind, or you wouldn't be here tonight. So maybe there are 20 or 30 or 40 different goals. But we at Bristol Community College, we the staff here, we only have one goal and one reason for coming into work every day, and that is to figure out a way to help you reach your goal. That's why we're here. So this is a partnership. Come and work with us. Be a partner with us in this, and we can work together to help you succeed. And lastly, we want you to start tonight of thinking as Br of Bristol Community College as your college, not just a place that you go and take classes and forget about in between, but this is your college. And we want you to start thinking of it that way, Some, a place that you're proud of, a, a place that you're going to invest in, and you're going to hear later on all the different ways that you can help invest in that, uh, help yourself in the process. So those are the four objectives that we have. And again, maybe they don't all seem quite solid for you tonight, but hopefully by the end of this journey they will. Okay, let's go back to next steps. Testing, advising, and registration, and talk a little more. Before we do that, though, there's a clue on this page, and I'm wondering if anyone can answer this question. There's a, a prize, if you can. Anybody know what the very first computer was? That's technically correct. <laughs> However, that's not the answer I'm looking for. There's a clue on this page. <laughs> no, the pencil and paper, the original computer. However, for answering, we will give you a prize. Get a BCC hat. <laughs> the original computer, the pencil and paper. And I put that's up here intentionally because most of you probably don't even use pencil and paper anymore. But we do want you to know that once in a while you'll still have to use that when you come on campus here. But the original computer, because the pad and paper was, you know, where you inputted the data, the pencil was how you inputted the data, you know, with the point. The flip side of the pencil was how you deleted data. And if you needed to reboot, you went to the pencil sharpener. So the original computer, the pencil. Anyway, testing, advisement, and registration, which is going to be the next step for most of you. We're going to... You can make that, first of all, you can make that appointment tonight. If you haven't done so already, all students need to make an appointment for this, and you can go to the table, the testing uh, table later, and make that appointment to do that. Some of you may have already done that. Some of you may not have received the letter yet inviting you to do that. You need to wait to get that letter, when you, uh, the letter that admits you into the college, and that's when you can make your appointment for testing. What goes into the testing is we're going to test you in three subject areas, reading, writing, and math. And the idea is to find out whether or not there's any area that you need a little refreshing before you go into the college level work. You want to know that before you sign up for your classes, of course, because if you do need some refreshing in one of those areas, you don't want to find out four weeks into a course that you signed up for that, that you're now lost in. You want to know ahead of time. So we're going to test you in those areas. And then after that testing on the same day, you're going to sit with an advisor and you're going to go over the results of that test and see how you did. For some of you, that will mean that you may have to take a developmental course to catch up on some of those skills that you might have lost a little bit since high school or never were that good in high school in the first place. Don't think of it as cruel and unusual punishment if you have to take one of those courses. Actually, think of it as a benefit because 
It's saving you the agony of getting in the course and then perhaps failing, not doing well, having to drop out. And, and that's what you'll go over with your ad advisor after you get the results of the, um, the placement testing. And then, based on all of that and that conversation, you'll actually register with the advisor. You actually register for your first semester of classes. There's something that can help you in preparing for that placement test. And we have placement testing prep. You can go onto the BCC homepage and get, find yourself to enrollment services and get yourself to the, pla to the uh, I, th on the, I think on the homepage it's called AccuPlacer Prep. So don't be confused by that. AccuPlacer Prep and Placement Testing Prep are the same thing. It, we call it Placement Testing Prep here simply because AccuPlacer is the standardized national test that's used for two of the three, but the third one is actually uh, a uh, hand, it, it's an essay. It's an essay that you do that is not a standardized computerized test. So two of them are AccuPlacer and one of them is yourself doing the test. But in either case, get yourself to the screen, and these are self-guided tutorials that you can take free of charge in order to better prepare to take the placement test. You might want to invest some time in doing that because we can tell you students who do overwhelmingly have a much higher success rate on the placement test. So a little investment in doing this self-tutorial by yourself can save you from taking one of those developmental courses that I spoke about a little while ago and perhaps get you on track to go right into full college level courses the first semester that you're here. Something very important to think about. And just like the locations that I mentioned before, testing also occurs in only these three locations. Fall River, Attleboro, and New Bedford. So again, if you're in Taunton, pick the one that you want when you're talking to the testing person, who I think is Jackie, is that correct? Jackie again. Say it, say it again, say it again, keep reminding people. She's the one you want to talk to about that. You can decide where you want to take the placement test. Next step, setting up your Access BCC account. Access BCC is the portal by which we will communicate with you in countless ways. It is very, very important that all new students set up their Access BCC account as quickly as they can. And again, you do that by going to the home page. And in that lower right-hand corner, see that green arrow pointing to My Access? That's where you want to go and follow the steps to set up your account. We will communicate with you in so many different ways. Some of the uh, ways that we will is that's how you'll register for your classes. DegreeWorks is on there, which is monitoring your progress toward your degree. Financial aid, all financial aid information will be listed out there. Grades are posted out there. E-learning, if you're taking any of those online classes, taking anything, anything through e-learning, it'll all be through your Access BCC account. Your bill will be out there. You'll get your bill through Access BCC. That might be one of the only reasons you don't want to open up your account, but I'm sorry you do have to because Ignorance of the bill is no excuse for not paying it, and you still have to pay it even if you never looked at it before. So there's all these ways, health insurance, the, I mean, sorry, the health immunization records, all of that, everything is through Access BCC. So don't hesitate to set up that account. And if you need any help in doing that, who, can someone help me? Who should they contact? Yeah. Okay. Contact. Okay, everybody got that? We're going to do it over and over and over again. Sarah, 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 just like Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. You'll get to know these people. You'll make the connections. Another important thing to consider, be notified. Be notified is also a portal for maintaining contact with you, but that's a, a voluntary one, although we're encouraging everyone to do it. This is voluntary. This is to get you onto our emergency notification, notification system. Although it will at times be used for things other than emergencies, uh, it will be where we might post uh, other last-minute important things that you need to know. Certainly, uh, like uh, closings, college closings would be out there. Not really an emergency because of a snowstorm, but something you might want to, you might want to sign up and get that email, uh, I'm sorry, uh, text message indicating that the college is closed today because of the weather. Uh, certainly in any kind of emergency or something like that, 
this is the means that we have of communicating with you. There are different ways that you can sign up to be notified about whatever it is that we're trying to send out. You decide when you get on that screen which options you want to use. Do you want a, a phone call on your cell phone? Do you want a phone call at home? Do you want to use email? Do you want to use a text message? You decide which ones. Uh, once you get on the page, it'll be self-explanatory, and you let us know how you want to be notified. We send out the message through all the means that we have. You get the ones that you signed up for. Next steps continuing. Here's an important one. How are we going to pay for this? Some of you, uh, I'm sure, you know, you've got that all figured out and you know what mechanism. Others are relying on financial aid to help out here. If you haven't completed your financial aid application yet and everything that's required for that, guess what? It's getting late. It may seem like classes are a long way off, but it's getting late. The actual early deadline has already passed for the spring. It's not too late, but it is getting late. And who do we have here from financial aid tonight? We have two representatives from financial aid here tonight. And you'll be at what table? Okay. This table is usually a very busy table tonight, and that's why we have two people. Um, so if you have any questions, or you haven't finished your application, or you just want to start it, those are the folks to see when we're done here this evening. If you are not eligible for financial aid, but you still need some kind of assistance or you think you might need some kind of help getting your bills paid for, you might want to consider the fax payment plan. That is a private company that works with the college that allows students to make scheduled payments throughout the semester as opposed to coming up with all of the uh, money right up front. So if you think that might be of interest to you, is there anyone here tonight from that department from the student accounts office? No, but you would, if you were interested in that, you want to contact the student accounts office here at the college. Just call the switchboard and ask for student accounts. They'll connect you. The deadline for signing up, if you want that, is January 21st. So you have to sign up by the 21st. And what they require is a certain percentage down payment when you sign up. And then I think you have three other additional payments throughout the semester. So you can spread it out, which makes it a little easier for some folks. How about some academic planning? Eventually, we have to get to academics, right? These are some of the things that you should keep in mind, some of the things that are important as, again, you're planning this journey. One of the most important things is getting to know your academic program director and faculty. They can be some of the key connections that you can make towards success. So depending on what program you're in, if you don't already know or if you don't, uh, if you don't have a mechanism for figuring that out, ask anyone. Make a phone call. Talk to an advisor. Talk to someone here tonight. We can put you in connection with who you need to talk to. On that orientation day in January, you will get more information about that. You will get to meet some of those folks. You will get to meet either some of the faculty from the program or the division dean or the program director. Somehow we'll make a connection for you. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Studying and homework. Isn't that a fun topic? Very few people are agreeing with me, except the staff. They're all agreeing with me. Question. Does anybody know about how many hours should you plan to invest in your college studies outside of the classroom? So put it into a, a, a percentage. For every hour of classroom time do you, that you have, how many hours per week do you think you should be planning on investing? Any, we have an answer right here, three to four hours, and that's absolutely right. Which may sound staggering to you, but that's what you need to plan for. An average of three hours for every hour in the classroom. So if you're taking a full-time course load of 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 credits, and then you multiply that by three and add those, you see this is a full-time job. Coming to school is a full-time job. You need to be prepared for that. This is all about college level learning and finding the right fit and that applies both to in the classroom and in your program. Not every instructor will be the instructor that's perfect for you. Every one of you has a different learning style. Not every class will be the right one for you. Not every program is necessarily the right one for you. You may have selected a program but maybe as you talk to an advisor and go further along you might think, hmm, you know what, maybe this is something better for me. And a little bit about that as we're talking about programs. The this is an important distinction that you should be making right now. The difference between a transfer and a career program. Career programs, by their title, are designed for students who don't think they're going to transfer to a four-year school later on. 
you're going to get the associate's degree and probably go to work. And, and so we give you the curriculum in a career program is very, very heavily weighted in your field of study. A transfer program, you can figure out the other, the other side of the equation here, is designed for students who think they're going to go on to a four-year school after. So the curriculum that you take with us during your first two years here, you still get an associate's degree, by the way, either way, but the two-year associate's degree in a transfer program is more closely aligned with the first two years of a four-year school. So when you transfer to the four-year school, you don't have any catching up to do. You can actually slide right into your third year there. It's important for you to know this distinction. I'll use the business program as an example. Some of you may have signed up for a business program, and we have a business career and a business transfer. You may want to talk to someone about your plans if you don't think you're necessarily in the right program at this point. But now that I've scared you, I'm going to give you, a, I've got to pull back a little bit and say, you don't have to fret over it too much though initially because in those two programs, the first semester, you pretty much are going to take the same courses anyway. But at some point, the curriculum really diverges from each other. So it's important that you make that distinction. The last caveat I'll give you though, um, also though, is even if you take a career program, you can still transfer later on. It doesn't prevent you from transferring. It just may not be that, it just may be that you're not set up ideally to go in directly into the third year at the senior institution when you do transfer. So something that you want to talk to an advisor or someone in the transfer office here or, or a program director early on to make sure you're on the right track. And lastly, first year experience in college success seminar. I'm actually going to leave that to Michael. He's going to come up in a, in a little bit and talk about the first year experience and I'll let him elaborate on that. The college success seminar, just a quick little piece on that. The, we at BCC uh, a year or so ago decided that it would be beneficial if all students had a, a college success seminar experience of some type. Schools across the country and across the world have found that, found that when you give students that experience, they have a higher success rate. And so all students, all new entering students as of this year, have to have that experience. And you get that experience either by taking that one credit college success seminar course, College Success Seminar 101, or your program of study has infused the same components into the curriculum. We don't need to go into which programs are which tonight, but one way or another, you will get that experience. So when you're meeting with your advisor after testing advisement and registration, if you are required to take that course, that's when you'll, you'll find out that you really need to, to take that course. If you're in one of the other programs, it'll just be infused in the curriculum as you go through the curriculum. Other campus services. Michael mentioned a bunch before. A few others that you should be aware of that aren't necessarily here right now. Uh, the Learning Resource Center. Used to be called just libraries. Now they're full learning resource centers. Within the Learning Resource Center, by the way, we have a cyber cafe. Remember the years when you went into the library and all you saw were the signs that said no food or drink and if you violated those rules, Miss So-and-so came over and whacked you on the wrist and kicked you out. And well, we decided it's, it's, it's not worth fighting that battle. So instead, we just put a cafe right in the, in the uh, Learning Resource Center now. So we have a cyber cafe where you can feed the soul, feed the mind, feed the body all at once. Uh, career services. A lot of people think, well, I don't need to think about career services until I'm getting the, at the end of my program. Career services is something you might want to be thinking about right now. You might want to talk to that office here on campus and make sure that the program that you chose is getting you towards the career that you really want. They can do some amazing things in that career office upstairs in getting people on the right track to where they really, really want to go. The writing lab, TAS, the president, and Michael, or one or the other, mentioned the TAS, which is the Tutoring Acad and Academic Support Center a place where you can get all kinds of help uh, towards your acad uh, on your academic work. The Fitness Center is another one uh, overseen by the athletic department, but we have a pretty, uh, uh, pretty nice, pretty good fitness center right in the uh, lower level of this building here. As you came in the front doors here, if you took a shop left and down the stairs, that's where the fitness center is. We mentioned athletics. The president mentioned athletics. We have men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, but we also have co-ed tennis, so we have three sports. If you're interested in playing any of those sports, please see Derek Viveris tonight and he'll give you some information around that. Student engagement. You've heard Kathy Burns, another name we'll mention several times today. I think this is the third time now who runs the student engagement office. These are some of the activities that come out of that office, some that have been mentioned already. This is a way to get 
students involved in the college beyond the classroom. And when you look at that last one, the curricular and co-curricular activities, that really, really is what gives you the full, well-rounded education. And we encourage students to get involved. And you're going to hear about that a little bit more from Michael and from a couple students who are going to speak after Michael about their experience and what it meant to them uh, to be engaged and to be involved. OK, I have one more prize to give away. But I can't show you the next slide until I ask a question and see if anyone can get it. And I'm just about done. And we're going to turn it back over to Michael. FERPA, F-E-R-P-A. Anyone know what that means for great prizes behind door number something here. FERPA, F-E-R-P-A. No one? Anyone want to venture a guess? FERPA, anyone want to venture a guess? <laughs> Very good. Do I have a second one, though? Because I need to give a prize to somebody else. Who else is going to say it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One way, the best way to be connected to BCC is you've got to have a cool BCC t-shirt. <laughs> a little word about FERPA. FERPA is the kind of the, the federal regulation that protects your record here as a college student. It oversees your records here. It dictates to us what we can and cannot divulge to other people besides you. You as the student, no matter how old you are, no matter who's paying the bill, you own your record. And that sometimes can be very, very disturbing to parents sitting in the audience here uh, when we say that you don't necessarily have access to the student's record. The student owns the record. And all of that is governed by FERPA. But the reason we bring it up tonight is because there's also a waiver that a student can sign that gives a third party access to that. And those waiver forms, I believe, are in the packets. The packets that you got, so if any of the tables here, that's a concern right now. It might be a little conversation you want to have at the end of our speaking here to see if somebody's going to have that form signed to give access to the person on the other side of the table. There's a lot more we can say about FERPA, and you'll hear about it as you're a student here over time, but we'll leave it at that for tonight. Okay, I am done here. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm going to bring Michael Hull back up. And he's going to talk about first year experience. Thank you very much, Steve. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate that. Uh, we are learning, running a little bit behind, so I'm going to uh, sum up my story pretty quick. I was a student here not too long ago, and I was the student trustee. And we do have a student trustee who's going to explain what the student trustee does here. But um, part of my success here, I'd like to say, was, was a lot of hard work. But the second part was making connections. And what I did was I surrounded myself with good people, with good peers, with good faculty, with good staff. I got to know them. I reached out to them. And it paid off. And when I had the opportunity to come back here to work with students like the faculty and staff did with me, I jumped at it. And I want to be that person for you. And all these other people in the audience who are here representing the services want to be here for you. And by the way, I neglected to mention a few, mention a few people, and I apologize for that. But from admission, uh, Shiloh Henriquez. From financial aid, Corey Lopes and Laura Banville in the back there. From Office of Disability Services, Jordan Krusek. Is that close? OK, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, so again, connections. And I know you've heard this all night uh, from the president, from the vice president, um, and now me. And one of the ways we're trying to make connections here at BCC is we're offering uh, a new pilot program that we're launching. It's a, a mentoring program. And it's called Mentoring with a Mission. And the program is designed to take veteran students, like the ones you're going to meet in a few minutes here, and pair them up with new students, first-year students like yourselves, um, in order to help you navigate your way through your first year here. This is a great way to make that first connection and help you get through that first year. And at the end of the mentoring program, what we're hoping that you'll do as the mentee is you become the mentor. So you can teach the next group of students coming in. 
so you can help guide them through and avoid the pitfalls. And uh, if you'll look in your folders, you'll see that the mentee applications are in there. So if anybody is interested and um, um, they'd like to make that connection, please fill it out, and you can leave it at the table uh, before, you leave the, um, before you leave the room tonight. Okay, on the screen here, what we have are a few of the things that the first year experience is working on. We have the virtual orientation page. It's a very extensive page with a lot of information, and if you give me a minute, I'm going to show you how we get there. Mentoring with a mission that I just mentioned. And the first year essay contest. The first year essay contest uh, just concluded. Um, we're hoping to have it next semester as well, so this coming semester. Um, it's for first year students only, and you can win $75, so it's a pretty good deal. Uh, workshops is another thing we're offering. We actually have a healthy relationships workshop tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the C building, room one, uh, 111. So that's open to everybody here if you'd like to attend. And this is how we're going to get to the uh, first year experience page, the virtual orientation page. You go to the main page and down in the lower left hand corner is new student cur uh, and current student information for first first year experience. You click on that. First year experience at BCC. Okay, I'm having a little technical difficulty. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I apologize for this, but um, I'll, I'll get it up in a minute. But um, right now what we can do is we're going to uh, move on to meet the students. And these students are uh, pretty special guys. They're very active here at BCC. And uh, if you guys want to make your way down here, that would be great. First one I'd like to introduce you to is Jason Almeida. He is a student trustee. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Jason Sadie, who is a student senator and a student ambassador, and Aaron Martell, also a student senator and a student ambassador. So I'm going to turn it over to them. They're going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing here and what's making them be so successful. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jason Alameda. I am the student trustee here, which means I sit on the board of trustees as the student representative. Now, what's a trustee? Basically, we're in charge of the college and its future. We want to make sure everything's running as well tomorrow as it is today. One of the things I like to do is I inform the board just what's going on with the student body. I want to make sure our concerns are felt and heard, and I'm that voice. I also like to make sure that they have a pretty good idea of what exactly it is we're doing on campus. A lot of unique events we do, charities, our clubs are doing or just something that a student does that's pretty unique and different from the normal everyday. Um, that being said, uh, you're all leaps and head pounds above where I was. I never went to any type of orientation or did any kind of extra curricular thing. Or I just wanted to get here and leave. So give yourself a pat on the back, because that's something. You may not think about it now, but really, it's telling of your character and what you can do later on. The thing that really changed college for me was my professors. I had some really great professors that really helped me and showed me a way and said, hey, don't be afraid to say yes to an opportunity because it's there. Say yes. Find something interesting. One of the things that a lot of people take for granted is the whole college experience. We have so many different activities and programs and clubs that you can join and be a part of and they can totally change your view and your outlook on college. A lot of way that started for me. I started off as a work study. I moved on to being a tutor. And I moved on to trying to do this, just to try to give back a little bit of what I got in return. So if you ever see me around campus, you have a problem, come talk to me. I will do the best I can to help you out. Or even if you just need someone to talk to, say, hey, I got a problem with this class. I don't quite know what to do. How do I go about this project? What's a good way to get started? That's what I'm here. I'm going to try to help you out the best I can. And also the rest of the senators would do that as well. Uh, yeah, 
we're a little bit late, so I'm going to cut it a bit short, and I'll uh, hand it over to Jason Sadie. Thank you, J Jason. We have the same name. Uh, I'm Jason Sadie, uh, the Vice President of the Student Senate. Um, show of hands, anyone heard of the Student Senate? No. Other than you guys, um, my senators were raising their hands. Um, the Senate is, uh, we, we oversee the clubs and we are, uh, we represent the students. So, I'm freezing up. I don't usually do this. <laughs> um, completely forgot what I was going to say. Sorry about that. Um, my first experience at BCC is kind of like what Mike and Jason were touching up on. Um, we really want to get to know our teachers. Um, like in my, uh, my first experience was to get to know my teachers. Um, you really want them to remember your name as they're reading your papers. Um, you don't want them to have like a Jason flirts with the girls in class and stuff like that. So you always want really good positive things. You want to stop by their office hours. You want to sit in the front of class, take good notes. Um, you really want your teacher to remember you. So someday they can write a letter of recommendation for you. And also, you want to get involved on campus. You want to check your mics, BCC. Um, they always send really good emails for you to check, so stay involved. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Aaron Martel. Uh, I graduated from Dartmouth High, year 2011. Um, I'm, right now, I am currently on the Student Senate as well. Uh, I'm the secretary. What that position does is it takes, takes record of what goes on during those meetings. Uh, we, we oversee the budgets of all the clubs and basically dot our I's, cross our T's, and pay whoever needs to get paid. Uh, I'm also a part of the ambassador program. What that is is that it, it represents a school. Basically, you go around, you give tours, you uh, just give, you got to be there for the school. Just, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the resources on the campus. Uh, what we have here, I want you guys to make sure you take advantage of the task center. The task center is basically an academic support center. You go there, you have trouble with biology, you have trouble with English, you can't, you're not good with, uh, you're not good with uh, science, anything. Um, we also have the writing center. You, you're in English, you're having trouble with papers, um, you go to the writing center. They have really good really good uh, tutors there, people to help you with the papers. For example, I was in, I took English 101 and 102, but in both those classes, I had trouble with my papers. And the people there got me on the right track to get that A. And uh, you guys should not be afraid to ask for help. Um, also, we have the LRC here, which is the Learning Resource Center. Um, they have really great selection of books. Please take advantage of that, because I, I don't know how to more to express how helpful that is. Uh, we also have study group rooms. Uh, they have these individual rooms, three of them. Uh, they're glass rooms. They have boards, you, multiple seats, markers. You, helps everybody. Um, we have computer labs. Well, the LRC has a nice computer lab, well, multiple computers. But we have a computer lab in one of our buildings, K building. Um, they have a desk there with people to help you if you have any trouble, you don't know how to work, Microsoft or any of those programs. Um, the last program I wanted to talk about was our co-op program. We have a really good intern program. It's, uh, it's kind of like a work study. Um, you get to go into a field that you're actually in and uh, get that experience hands-on. But I'm kind of running short on time, so I just want to cut it there. Uh, please, I don't want to stress this enough, ask for help if you need it. We're, we're all here, hands out. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. OK, we're back on schedule. So um, we have any questions? Do uh, people have any questions? Um, uh, Student ambassador, student trustee, don't go too far in case we have some questions relating to you. 
Um, any questions at all? There must be some questions. You guys must have like tons of questions. Are, are you a little shy? Don't want to ask? Okay, right, right there in the middle. We do have services in New Bedford as well, in Attleboro. Um, obviously here, it's a bigger campus. We have uh, the Cyber Cafe we don't have in New Bedford, but um, they have uh, tutoring and other services as well. Yes. Any other questions? Oh. Yes, Joe can speak to the Attleboro camp uh, campus. He is the director of the campus. Um, any other questions, please, please feel free to ask. And uh, we're going to uh, break real soon, and you'll be able to go over to the tables and, and speak with the representatives themselves.